morning students. Till now we have seen some theoretical results which tell us the relationship between the objective function value of the primal and the dual. In today's lecture, we will try to find out what is the relationship between the solutions of the primal and the dual. So, the title of today's lecture is relationship between the solution of the primal and the dual. Today's outline is as follows. First, we will relook at the simplex multipliers, then we will define primal feasible basis, then we will define dual feasible basis. Next, we will look at an example of primal dual and we will try to solve the primal dual and at the end we will see what is the relationship between their solutions and finally, an exercise. Now, you have studied the simplex multipliers when we studied the revised simplex method. So, I wish you to recall what is the meaning of the simplex multipliers, how the values of the simplex multipliers are obtained at each iteration and even at the final table you can read the simplex multipliers from the initial table. Now, these simplex multipliers will be of very good use as far as the solutions of the primal and the dual are concerned and that is what we are going to see. So, let us look at the simplex multipliers from the theoretical angle first of all. Now, suppose x 1, x 2, x m are the basic variables corresponding to a certain basis of the equations a x is equal to b. As you know, uh, basically we are interested in the solutions of a x is equal to b and as you know that the canonical form uh, gives you the uh, basis that we are interested in. So, in the matrix notation this solution x 1, x 2, x m can be represented like this. Uh, first we have the matrix a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 m similarly a 2 1, a 2 2, a 2 m and a m 1, a m 2, a m m and this is to be multiplied by x 1, x 2, x m. Now, these are m. So, this is a, a matrix m by m matrix and on the right hand side we have b 1 minus a 1 m plus 1 x m and minus a 1 m x 1 m. So, basically what we have done is we have put the matrix uh, on the left hand side is the matrix a m m that is corresponding to the, uh, the coefficients corresponding to the x 1, x 2, x m uh, variables because they are the basis and the rest of the things we have taken on the right hand side. So, right hand side consists, consists of these expressions that are shown on the right hand side. That means, that the value of x is equal to a inverse b. So, we can take this a inverse on the other side and we will get the solution x. Again in matrix notation we can write it as follows x 1, x 2, x m is equal to b 1 bar minus a 1 m plus 1 bar x m plus 1 and so on. Now, the bar has been written because when you are going to uh, take the inverse and multiply it then the values will be changed. So, that is the reason why you need to put a bar this is not the same values as the previous 
equation. And this when you solve it will give you uh, this expression x 1 plus a 1 bar m plus 1 x m plus 1 plus a 1 m bar x n is equal to b 1 bar and like this the other equations. So, whatever has been uh, got at the left hand side is now written in terms of equal to the right hand side of b 1 bar b 2 bar etcetera. Now, what does this mean? This canonical form of the equations with respect to the basis formed by the variables x 1, x 2, x m is feasible provided the right hand side that is the b i bar they are greater than or equal to 0 for all values of i is equal to 1 to up to m. Uh, you know that it ha in order to make it feasible we need the right hand side greater than or equal to 0. Now, using the canonical form we can eliminate the basic variables from the objective function like this we get f x is equal to summation of b i bar c i where i goes to 1 to m plus summation c j bar x j where j is equal to m plus 1 to n. So, the coefficients or the terms corresponding to the basic variables are separated out and the terms corresponding to the non basic variables are separate out and obviously, their coefficients will also be different. And as just now we have seen the values of uh, the c i s will be like this the c i bar is equal to c i minus summation c i a i bar where i goes to 1 to m and this holds for all j uh, equal to m plus 1 to n and uh, the c i bars they are equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m. So, corresponding to the basic variables as you know the deviation rows these are nothing but the deviation rows. So, the entries in the deviation rows as you know corresponding to the basic variables are 0 and corresponding to the non basic variables are non 0 and that is how they are obtained. Now, these are nothing but the relative cost coefficients or nothing but the entries in the deviation row as we have seen till now that uh, when you do the simplex calculations at each iteration you have the deviation rows. Now, it is possible to get it for any basic basic variable or any basis directly from the original equations as follows. Let us suppose we have the problem minimize f is equal to summation c i x i we will call this equation as star and this is subject to the conditions a i j x j is equal to b i i goes to 1 to m and this equation we will call as double star. So, this is nothing but the uh, problem the linear programming problem in the standard form. Now, let x 1 x 2 x m 0 0 0 be a BFS. It means that we have separated out x 1 x 2 x m uh, separately and 0 0 0 because totally there are n uh, decision variables, but we have separated out the first m and the remaining are 0. Now, our problem is to express f x that is the objective function in terms of the non basic variables what are the non basic variables x m plus 1 and so on up to x n uh, eliminate the basic variables 
x 1 x 2 x m from star with the help of double star. So, this you can do using this equality constraints you can actually uh, eliminate the basic variables x 1 x 2 x m uh, using this uh, equations the a x equal to b and put them into the objective function. Then you can multiply each of the equations double star that is the equality constraints by the constants pi 1, pi 2, pi m respectively and add them to the star equation. And what are these pi 1, pi 2, pi m? They are nothing but the simplex multipliers. So, this is what you will get. This equation on the top uh, tells us when you uh, do this operations on the equations, you will get these pi 1, pi 2, pi m like this. Now, it is our freedom to choose p 1, p 2, p m uh, sorry pi 1, pi 2, pi m in such a way that the coefficients of x 1, x 2, x m they vanish. That is each of the expressions summation a i j pi j is equal to minus c j, j is equal to 1 to up to m. Then f is equal to summation uh, j equal to m plus 1 to n c j bar x j minus summation b i x i i goes to 1 to up to m, where these coefficients are as before uh, defined as c i bar is equal to c i plus summation a i j x i j equal to m plus 1 to n. Now, these are nothing but m equations in the unknowns pi i's and that is how you can solve them. Now, the same thing can be written in the matrix notation like this that is a 0 dash pi is equal to minus c 0 dash where pi is the vector uh, of the met, uh, simplex multipliers and it is equal to minus a 0 dash inverse c 0 dash and this you can manipulate and you can get it equal to minus a 0 inverse multiplied by c 0 and therefore, you can get pi dash is equal to minus c 0 a 0 inverse. So, you have got the matrix uh, multipliers vector. The vector pi is as before the simplex multiplier vector and its components are called the simplex multipliers. So, basically we can solve uh, the equations of the LP and use those equations to be substituted in the objective function. So, that we can get the condition satisfied and we can get the simplex multipliers. Now, the rule for obtaining a 0 inverse that is the most important part of how to get a 0 inverse. So, we will understand uh, the methodology for finding out a 0 inverse with the help of this example. Uh, let us suppose we are given the problem at maximization of f x is equal to minus 4 x 1 minus 5 x 2 subject to 2 x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 6 x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than or equal to 5 x 1 plus x 2 greater than or equal to 1, x 1 plus 4 x 2 greater than or equal to 2 and x 1 and x 2 are both greater than or equal to 0. Now, 
as we have done in the uh, previous results, we will be adding the slack, the surplus and the artificial variables and we will apply the phase 1 of the two phase method. So, we get the problem as minimization of g x is equal to x 1 sorry x 7 plus x 8. Why? Because uh, x 7 and x 8 are the artificial variables and as you know that in the two phase method we have to set aside the original objective function and use the temporary objective function as the sum of the artificial variables. So, here x 7 and x 8 are the artificial variables and we get this equation 2 x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 6. Second constraint is x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus x 4 is equal to 5. Third one is x 1 plus x 2 minus x 5 plus x 7 is equal to 1 and the last equation is x 1 plus 4 x 2 minus x 6 plus x 8 is equal to 2. As you know x 3 and x 4 are the slack variables and x 5 and x 6 are the surplus variable and x 7 and x 8 are the uh, artificial variables. Of course, all of them have to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, we find that the basic variables of this canonical form is uh, x 3, x 4, x 7 and x 8. So, these are the basic variables. <coughs> now, from the last two constraints, we can uh, get x 7 and x 8 which are nothing the, but the artificial variables. Uh, x 7 we can get equal to 1 minus x 1 minus x 2 plus x 5 and similarly x 8 is equal to 2 minus x 1 minus 4 x 2 plus x 8. So, these are the, the uh, we have got hold of the last two constraints because in the last two constraints only we had the artificial variables. So, what we have done is we have uh, kept the artificial variables on the left hand side and taken the rest of the things on the right hand side. Now, we will substitute all this in the objective function the temporary objective function g x. So, as to express g x in terms of the non basic variables, uh, what are the non basic variables? x 1, x 2, x 5 and x 6. So, what we have got? Uh, the g x, the temporary objective function g x was nothing but x 6 sorry x 7 plus x 8. And in terms of x 7 using this constraints that we have got, we will substitute the value of x 7 and x 8 and we get the following minus 3 minus 2 x 1 minus 5 x 2 plus x 5 plus x 6. Now, the initial table looks like this that is we have uh, the basis in the first column, then we have the entries corresponding to x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6, x 7 and x 8 and then finally, the right hand side. So, all these entries have been taken from the given equations into the initial table you are all familiar uh, with this method by which we can write all these entries uh, into the initial table.
and also we can solve the problem and look at the entries in the final table. In the final table again we have the basis in the first column and similarly the entries corresponding to the variables x 1, x 2, x 8 uh, in the remaining uh, columns. Uh, you will note that the last um, the entries of x 7 and x 8 have not been entered these are blank. So, in the final table why are the entries in the column x 7 and x 8 not been written. Can you think of the reason? Yes, the reason is that since they have disappeared from the basis uh, that means that they are 0. So, therefore, we, we are not interested in the artificial variables and hence all the entries corresponding to x 7 and x 8 have to be removed because unnecessarily they are uh, creating uh, computations which are not required. So, looking at this initial and the final table what we see? We see that the basis of the initial table is the x 3, x 4, x 7 and x 8 whereas, in the final table uh, the basis is given as x 3, x 4, x 1 and x 2. So, this is our uh, basis of the initial table and the basis of the final table. Now, the problem is to find out A 0 inverse, where A 0 is the matrix of the coefficient of these variables that are the basis that is x 3, x 4, x 1 and x 2 in the initial table. And what is that uh, matrix? That matrix A 0 is 2 1 1 1 1 2 1 4 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 as you know that this is matrix is called the a 0 matrix and we are interested in finding out its inverse. So, a 0 inverse we will op operate this a 0 inverse on the initial matrix of the coefficients. So, as to produce the final matrix of the coefficients as you know. So, this is what we are going to do we are going to operate a 0 inverse on the initial matrix that we got and we are going to get basically you do not need to do it on all the columns of the given matrix you can just uh, take only the sub matrix of the last four columns and uh, this you can do just to avoid the unnecessary calculations. So, uh, we are going to apply a 0 inverse on 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 and this will be equal to 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 7 by 3 2 by 3 minus 4 by 3 1 by 3 and the last column is minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 and minus 1 by 3. So, basically we are applying this operator uh, a 0 inverse on the entire equation uh, on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. Now, since the inverse of a diagonal matrix 
with diagonal entries either 1 or minus 1 is the matrix itself. Therefore, we can get a 0 inverse on the left hand side and this is equal to uh, the matrix 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 7 by 3 2 by 3 minus 4 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 multiplied by this matrix 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 and when you multiply it you will get a 0 inverse and what is our a 0 inverse it is the matrix that we have got as follows 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 minus 7 by 3 minus 2 by 3 4 by 3 and minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 and 1 by 3. So, that is how we have got uh, the a 0 inverse which we want and what are the simplex multipliers? Simplex multipliers are nothing but pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4 which is equal to 0, 0, minus 4, minus 5 multiplied by this matrix A 0 inverse. Now, what is this 0, 0, minus 4, minus 5? This is nothing but the coefficients of the objective function of the basis corresponding to this stage. So, if you look at the objective function, it was uh, uh, the basis that is x 3, x 4, x 1 and x 2. So, x 1 and x 2 uh, are the basic variables and the coefficients corresponding to x 3 and x 4 are 0 and the coefficients corresponding to x 1 and x 2 are minus 4 and minus 5. Uh, please be aware that you cannot change the order of x 3, x 4, x 1 and x 2. You have to leave it as it is in the final table. What I am trying to say is you cannot make it x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. You have to leave it as x 3, x 4, x 1, x 2. So, you are not allowed to change the order. So, we have got this uh, simplex multiplies and when you multiply this uh, row vector with this matrix, you get the final simplex multiplies as 0, 0, minus 11 by 3 and minus 1 by 3. So, these are nothing but the simplex multipliers. Now, we will look at some definitions. First of all, if we have the primal in the form as follows, minimize z is equal to c x subject to a x equal to b x greater than or equal to 0 and let us suppose that a is given by the columns p 1, p 2, p n and b is a basis for a and x b is the basic variables corresponding to the basis b. So, it is not necessary that uh, I mean it, it is important that you have to uh, maintain the sequence that is appearing in the basis. So, that sequence has to be followed that is why uh, we are writing it in this form a is equal to p 1 p 2 p m. Now, we define the primal feasible basis as follows a uh, basis b is called primal feasible basis if and only if it is given by b inverse b is greater than or equal to 0. I am sorry that inverse has gone to the next line, but you can understand that b inverse capital B inverse 
multiplied by b should be greater than or equal to 0 and uh, capital X b is equal to b inverse b and x n is equal to 0. So, x n stands for uh, the variables corresponding to the non basic entries and the objective function value that is z is equal to c b that is the cost coefficients corresponding to the basic variables in the objective function b inverse b. The primal feasible basis is optimum when c j bar is equal to c j minus pi times p j and this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, c j bar are nothing but the deviation entries and they have to be greater than or equal to 0 for optimality, where of course, pi are nothing but the simplex multipliers. So, pi is equal to uh, c b b inverse these are the simplex multipliers. The dual constraint y a less than or equal to c can be written as y p j less than or equal to c j <coughs> that is c j minus y p j is greater than or equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to up to n. Therefore, by checking the optimality conditions is the same as verifying whether the simplex multipliers satisfy the dual constraints or not. Thus, if the primal feasible basis B is also an optimum basis to the primal, then the simplex multipliers that is pi is equal to C B B inverse satisfy the conditions C J minus pi P J greater than or equal to 0 for J is equal to 1 2 up to n. Now, that is pi is feasible to the dual problem. So, the simplex multipliers the pi is the simplex multipliers they are feasible to the dual problem. Now, the value of the dual objective function that is w is equal to pi b which is nothing but c b b inverse b which is the primal objective. Hence, by the duality theorem pi is optimum to the dual problem. So, therefore, what does it mean that using the duality theorem uh, we have shown that pi is optimum to the dual pro problem. Now, let us take an example. Uh, suppose we have the primal and the dual given as follows that is the primal is maximization of f is equal to 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 subject to x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than 20, x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 15 and x 1 and x 2 are greater than or equal to 0. Also, we have the corresponding dual as w is equal to 20 y 1 plus 15 y 2 subject to y 1 plus y 2 greater than or equal to 3 and 2 y 1 plus y 2 greater than or equal to 5. So, just a two variable problem and its corresponding dual. Let us try to solve both the primal and the dual with the help of the uh, graphical method. This is what is the solution of the primal. The shaded region shows the feasible domain 
and the optimum of the primal lies at the point B. So, B is the point of optimum that is 10 comma 5 and its objective function value is 55. You know how to solve a given LP with the help of the graphical method. Next, let us look at the solution of the dual. Uh, this is the solution of the dual and as you can see that the feasible region is unbounded, but because uh, the objective function of the dual is minimization. So, the minimum occurs at the point B which is nothing but uh, 2 comma 1 and its objective function value is 55. So, looking at these graphical solutions we know that the solution of the primal and we know the solution of the dual and we know that their objective function values is same 55. Okay. Now, let us solve this primal with the help of the simplex method and we will try to observe the relationship that is what is the relationship? The relationship is that the simplex multipliers are nothing but the solution of the dual and that is the whole uh, theme of today's lecture that is the simplex multipliers of the primal are the solution of the dual. So, we know that the solution of the primal is 10 comma 5 here it is the solution of the primal is 10 comma 5 and the solution of the dual is 2 comma 1. Let us see how this is shown in the simplex calculations. Now, we are going to solve this primal with the help of the simplex method. Therefore, the given problem is uh, uh, maximization of 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 subject to x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than 20 and x 1 plus x 2 is less than or equal to 15. So, in order to solve it with the simplex method what we need to do is we need to uh, add uh, two variables which are nothing but the slack variables. So, x 3 and x 4 are the slack variables which uh, makes them equal sorry this less than should be in in the last two equations they should be equal. We should have x 1 plus 2 x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 20 this is not less than this is equal to. Then x 1 plus x 2 plus x 4 should be equal to 15 because we have added the slack variables x 3 and x 4. Now, let us look at this simplex table. So, what do you find? Uh, basically, we have 3 iterations. Uh, in the first iteration, we just have the entries of the simplex uh, problem uh, into the table x 3 and x 4 is the basis as you have seen and the entries are reported in the columns x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and the right hand side is shown and in the last column uh, I have shown the simplex multipliers at that particular iteration. So, in the first iteration uh, you just have the basis the coefficients corresponding to the basis in the objective function. So, that is 0 0 multiplied by 1 0 0 1 and the simplex multipliers come out to be 0 0. In the second uh, iteration now the basis has changed and the coefficients corresponding to the basis are uh, 5 0 and if you look at the last column in the last column 5 0 has to be multiplied by this uh, matrix that is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 0 and 1. Uh, obviously, you know how to find out the pivot and perform the next iteration. So, I am not talking about that at the moment I am just talking about the simplex multipliers and at each iteration we want to look at the behavior of the sim simplex multipliers. 
So, the last column is showing the simplex multipliers. Next, in the third iteration, we find that the coefficients of the basis in the objective function is 5, 3 and this 5, 3 is multiplied by uh, the matrix 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2 and the simplex multipliers come out to be 2, 1. So, looking at these entire calculations of this problem right from the beginning to the end at iteration by iteration, you can see that you do not need to solve the dual because you can read the values of the dual from the simplex table itself. That is the values of the simplex multipliers shown in the last column at the final iteration are nothing but the solution to the dual. So, 2 comma 1 is the solution to the dual and that is what is written in the uh, last line. Solution of the primal is the basis corresponding to the right hand side and what is that? That is nothing but x 1 is equal to 10 and x 2 is equal to 5. So, 10 comma 5 is the solution of the primal with the objective function equal to 55. And if you look at the simplex multipliers shown in the last column, then you can see that the solution of the dual is nothing but uh, y 1 is equal to 2 and y 2 is equal to 1 that is 2 comma 1. This is the solution of the dual. Of course, its objective function value is 55. So, that is the beauty of the primal and the dual relationship that when you have the primal, uh, you do not need to solve the dual, you just solve the primal and at the end in the last iteration, if you obtain its simplex multipliers, those simplex multipliers are nothing but the solution of the dual. Of course, their objective function values will be same as we have seen because of the uh, weak duality theorem. So, I hope everybody is now familiar in the way in which you have obtained the solution of the dual from the solution of the primal. So, here is an exercise for you write the dual of the following LPP and solve the primal uh, problem with the simplex method and obtain the solution of the dual from the primal calculations itself. So, you just have to read the solution of the dual from the primal problem itself. So, the problem is minimization of minus 3 x 1 minus 4 x 2 subject to 7 x 1 minus 2 x 2 greater than or equal to 4 minus 3 x 1 plus x 2 less than or equal to 3, x 1 and x 2 are greater than or equal to 0. So, I hope everybody has understood the question what to do. You have to solve it with the help of the simplex method and without solving the dual, read the solution of the uh, dual from the simplex calculations. Thank you.